Okay, I hope it makes two videos. I hope that other one doesn't get deleted. And now I will open it up to whatever y'all want. So assignment five questions. We could take this like office hours. Feel free, type in the chat. The chat won't be online. If you want, feel free to unmute, say something. Uh, I'll share my screen. I can show stuff. So yeah, feel free, ask any questions. Um, this is more of a, sorry. This is more of a finals related question. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to be comprehensive, right? So we're gonna see things from like our first CTF and stuff from our most recent um, yeah, I, I, assignment. I mean, you'll find out in two days, right? So uh, it's, yeah, the, it'll test you on things. Obviously we want to, want to test you more on things the second half of the class because you haven't necessarily had that uh, get yet. So, um, so yeah, that, that's an important thing. The other thing is we'll, I'll be doing uh, on Thursday. Uh, Thursday at 10.30 is when we'll launch the final. And so uh, I'll do, so our class on Thursday will be like a mini review session for the final where I'll show everyone how to use it. You should all uh, be, you know, get your computers, get ready to use it then. And so we can, um, it'll, it's slightly different than what we've used in the past, but it still should be uh, very easy. Um, so anyways, yeah, Thursday will be cool. Okay. In the assembly challenges, will we get full credit if it says partially correct and 10? It's a good question. I don't know. Uh, ask on Piazza. How many questions are we expecting for the final? Enough to test your ability and understanding of the course. I will tell you that uh, I think we've said this that, you know, Assignment five stuff will definitely be on the final. So that's why it's important to start it early and get comfortable with that things. Um, cool. Uh, okay, people are asking about editing code in Ghidra. Uh, why are you asking that? And do you have a specific question? Ghidra is a decompiler, right? So it's it just shows you what's in the binary. I mean, technically you can change things, but it's not quite really what it's meant for. Can uh, if you have a specific Gij related question, or I don't know, I'm I'm happy to answer more. Uh, so no, you would not use Gidra to compile from assembly to C. You also can't compile. Yeah, so Ghidra should be able to show you uh, what it's doing. It doesn't, it won't quite recompile, decompile, and that's called decompilation. So it's not going to decompile all the way to C. It'll decompile to something similar to that. But Ghidra, object dump, these types of things are, are basically reverse engineering tools to understand what's going on. Um, if you want to like uh, compile, you would write your own assembly code or your own C program and then compile it that way. I see. When I perform X, I just want to show you return what the function is. Uh, Yeah, the other thing is make sure you check out the Piazza post. There's a lot of stuff on Piazza of people. I've asked people who've made resources to post them on Piazza. So you guys can all see that. Um, let's see. Yeah, that was from the, the walkthrough that Lambda had posted. Yeah, uh, the X over I, and then the, the address you get right when you hit control C, which is where the bytes are stored, uh, was supposed to return what function was at that point. I think Ad was in his uh, uh, walkthrough example, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not getting anything. I just get bad. 
What are you so, putting as that the address where the bytes are stored? You mean where the uh, are? I mean, if you want to share your screen, we can. Uh, I can look at it and see what we're doing. Yes. Uh, let me allow you to share a screen. Oh no, you can share a screen. Seems dangerous. Cool. Um, yeah. So, I'm sorry. I should have said it's the RSI pointer, um, which is the value that it returns when you just uh, hop out. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that's uh, the right terminology. Um, so yeah, I run an XI on that, which is what he did in the walkthrough, which is what I did in the uh, Stack Overflow teaching example. Mm -hmm. uh, and it would return um, what function it was, add or whatever. But now I just get bad. Do uh, press up and uh put a 20 before the I. So this is only printing out one instruction. I like to do 20 I or something to print out the 20. It says, basically what this is saying is access whatever's at memory. There you go. Uh, access whatever's at memory 7FFF 10B88E90. Uh, whatever's there, interpret the next 20 things as instruction. Okay, so this starts at that point mm -hmm. and then it goes 20 beyond that. Exactly. Uh, not 20 bytes, but 20 instructions. Instructions. Yeah. Right, because each inst instructions could be one byte or up to, I think, five or six bytes. So you can see on the left, it's showing you the addresses, right? So you have E90, E91, E93. So it means that your first byte is not a valid uh, x8664 instruction. So I don't know what you're putting in necessarily into the buff. I'm not putting anything at this point. I'm right, just right, right. So, so what this is showing you is it's showing you where this buffer is located and what's already in there, right? So it's, it's just random gibberish, basically. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so the RS point, RSI pointer is just pointing to random gibberish at this point. Yeah, because this is the read function, right? So what this means is, so you can see up there right where it says program received interrupt and it's telling you it's in this uh, libc underscore read. Uh -huh. right? So it's saying, okay, FD zero. So it's reading from standard input. It's reading into buff and it's reading a total of 1056 bytes, right? So what read is gonna do is when you give input, it's gonna copy the bytes from your input into that buffer, which is what you're looking at right now. Okay. Sounds yeah, I'm just uh, I'm trying to uh, use what I learned from his walkthrough in this. Mm -hmm. I was assuming that was what it was for, and because uh, it, it like it's the same thing, just minus the addresses provided in the directions up there. Um, so I'm trying to use his walkthrough, and I'm just having trouble uh, understanding how to do that, how to use his walkthrough to solve this. Well, what's the point right here? Like, what do you try, what, what's the goal of with printing this out, this buffer as if it was instructions? Um, this particular one is just one of the steps he did in the walkthrough. And uh, I'm- Why, why? <laughs> I might have to watch that walkthrough again for the 10th time to see if I missed that. Uh, basically, I could not, figure out how to find the return pointer to continue on. Um, I see. Then, yeah. So at that point, I was, I've just been, you know, clicking around. And then I got this, which I figured I would ask as well to see if something else is on. I'm doing something else wrong. No, I would uh, not interpret it as instructions. I would do X, I hit up and do fix it so that it, it's X slash 20 G. So G is giant, which means 64 bytes. Mm -hmm. um, and this will show you the stack at that point. Or sorry, this will show you all the bytes on the stack up to that point. Um, yeah, this would be where I would say, hey, this was the return address. Exactly. The description. Yes. Now I, I don't know how to find that to, to search through this list for it. Yeah. Um, do uh, can you hit BT? 
BT. Yeah, BT, it's backtrace is what that stands for. Just BT, no slash? Yep. Yeah, so what this is showing you is it's calling into read, right? That's uh, hash zero. And then hash one is the address in Vuln. So what you're looking for is something that looks like that on the stack. You probably didn't print out necessarily enough. So uh, go back up until you get to the 20 G and change it to like 40 G. Maybe more like 50 G. Have you given input in here or no? I, I think the register you're looking for is way further away. I usually would look for the RBP and then look at the registers in the RBP and that usually had what I was yeah, My for. RBP at this point though is uh, zero. Uh, I don't, did you look at that already? So check that address, do the X40G or 20G or whatever on that address. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how I just got an RBP value. Usually it says there's, uh, uh, cannot, cannot identify memory at zero X zero or something like that. That would be something maybe you would do before you started running the program because there wouldn't be an RBP. Uh, well, I ran it in uh, GBD and GDB and then terminated and then was looking for RBP. Terminated or control C? Um, um, guys, you don't even really need math. Like there's not a whole lot of point in finding the base pointer if you can just like essentially guess and check. That's how I ended up having to figure out the value for overflow three. Like put in a hundred A's and a hundred B's and then, I mean, you need more, right? But if you check in GDB and you see that your like return pointer is full of B's, then you know that you're in the second half of the string. And you can just keep doing that until eventually you see like you can get exactly where the return pointer is and then overwrite exactly that and it just works. That makes less sense to me. Um, but you can still look at the address there and you should be able to get the return address if you look at your RBP, the values in RBP. Uh, let's do this, this will be easier. Go up, press, uh, not, not go up, type in up. This is gonna move you up the stack because right now you're in that read function, which we actually don't care about because read is just doing the overwriting. I'm sorry, which which instruction uh, am I actually, doing? Like type in UP and hit enter. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Now RB now it set all the values. So this is the now RBP will be will point to the base pointer in the vulnerable function. So if you do x slash uh, 20 G and then space uh, a dollar sign RBP. Boom, there we go. So you can see, so the base pointer always points to that somebody was posting this in Discord, but it's a, uh, the way it works is the base pointer currently points to the saved base pointer. So that thing right there is saved base pointer. And the next thing after it is saved instruction pointer. So if you overwrite that, you are good. Um, and you can calculate because you know up there, you can use math very simply. It's just subtraction, not complicated math, right? You have up there, you know the address of your buffer, right? It's 7FF10BEE0E90. And you know that uh, the address you want to overwrite is at B891D0, or actually D8, because it's that second. Uh, the left column is D0, the right column is D8. And so subtract that. So can you do that subtraction? 
And that'll tell you exactly how many bytes you need to get to there. I'm sorry, where is the D8? So D0, which byte here is D0? Yeah, those eight bytes are D0. So the next eight bytes on the right column, that's your saved instruction pointer. And we know that because when we looked at the backtrace, right, you can see that it's all 55CC, 41A9C, whatever. So that's, a, in, that's an instruction pointer right there. Okay, I I understand what you're saying. I, I I don't know if I could understand. I quite grasp it enough to use it outside of this one particular instance, though. Um, there's a office hour right after this class, right? Uh, whatever the course schedule says. Okay, I, I don't think have it one. memorized. Uh, um, I, I'll go ahead and hand off to somebody else, so somebody else can have a question because I. I I think I just am still way too lost on this at this point. Um, okay, so um, if I could ask a question. Sure, yeah. Okay, so I was I was under the impression that like um, Stack Overflow 2 and Stack Overflow 2 teaching were the same thing, except for Stack Overflow 2 teaching gives you more information. Is that correct? Uh, you tell me, I don't know. Well, cause, um, I was doing, I did Stack Overflow 2 teaching and, um, the method I used worked. And then I tried the same method in Stack Overflow 2, uh, normal and it didn't work. And, uh, I'm wondering if I like have to change my process I'm doing Cause yeah, I thought it was, um, the same thing without the information. Uh, why don't you, can you show it to us? Uh, yeah, I can't hear um, okay, can you see my screen? Uh, yep. Okay, so basically what I do is I set some breakpoints in the GED, I do some stuff, and I end up getting um, the register RSI, okay? Mm -hmm. So I get this register right here, and then and I do info what, right, frame. Sorry, this is just right before the call to uh, read? Yep, we, right? we will now read in some bytes, and then I start getting my information. So um, I go, okay, so RSI, I get this register, and I also get um, this register, mm -hmm. and I subtract these two registers together, and I get B8, um, which is, I'm pretty sure, is the amount of bytes um, to overflow it or something like that. To get there, yeah. So it's the difference right. between, so if you're writing into that buffer, and actually this goes back to the earlier question, right? So if you're writing into that buffer, the very first write will happen at uh, 4490 and then 4491 and so on and so forth. Uh, and if, so if you do whatever that subtraction is, you'll get all the way up to right before the, the saved instruction pointer. So the next eight mm -hmm. bytes will be the instruction pointer. Exactly. Okay. And then what I do is, because um, hang on, let me quit my code. Uh, basically what I do is that with this uh, B8 number, I-, I did it. Sorry, I didn't know about info frame. Where did you learn that from? That's very uh, info frame. Um, yeah. Actually, um, uh, Tiffany used it in her um, awesome. example when she See. explained the first stack overflow problem. Tiffany's way better than me. Cool. That's awesome. <laughs> it, it prevents it. You know, saves you from having to do that calculation and look at it on the stack. Right. That's right. Really cool. Anyway, so what I do is uh, let me quit. Um, what I do is I write my code, and mm -hmm. no. So I write my Python code. Um, da -da 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 -da. And what my Python code is, is it goes, it writes a buffer with the amount of bytes to overflow it, plus struct path, and then the address of the win function. And uh, that's- worth, Well, not the full address, right? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, yeah, right, not the full address. It's like 0x1310. But um, yeah, and this, like this strategy of like going in, like obviously it's changed because I've had to get uh, my- um my B8 and my win address differently. Mm -hmm. But the point is that I've been using this and this has worked for the past two. So I'm just um, curious if like I missed like a, something up or yeah, something like small like that or if I'm just like need to completely change my process. On this one versus you're saying the Stack Overflow 2? Teaching, yeah. So this is Stack Overflow 2. Um, on Stack Overflow 2 teaching this work, but mm -hmm. yeah, it didn't work on this one. If you watch the last like 
five or six minutes of the TA's example, he goes over how to like kind of go into approaching a problem like this where you're not given the information. So that might be helpful as well because it's a different program that you have to run in that case. And like, at least for me, for Stack Overflow 1 and Stack Overflow, or excuse me, Stack Overflow Teaching and Stack Overflow 2 were both, I had to use a different program for each one. But if you watch a TA's video, he kind of goes into it like the last five or six minutes. Right. Um, so like that would probably work, except for um, the information that was given in Stack Overflow 2, I didn't really use um, like at all. And so I figured that like they were the same, I could just do the same thing. Um, if again, if it's a different program, then yeah, I would it should definitely do that. Can, but, you, can you debug it? I don't know that it's necessarily the same, right? Um, uh, yeah, here. Just, just like you were doing before. I think that's the, you're you're on the correct process. So we should. Uh, Did you find the new address for win? Because that's going to be different in this one than it was in the Stack Overflow 2 that's, teaching. That's I yeah, I did. I did OBG okay. jump dash E assignment. Uh, let's go to win. <laughs> Not this one, right this one. Aha. This is the address I used. Okay, 1310. Which also changes from run to run. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, look, so that, look, that's look why what the TA does. Go, go down. Okay. Go down. Okay. Uh, no, to Voln. I would just want to make sure your offsets are correct, right? Oh, okay. So where where's the vulnerable um, uh, read? Vulnerable read? See the Python. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Um, can we see the Python? Wait, wait, just a second. Uh, there we go. The read. So it's uh, so it's RSI. So coming back from there. So EDI is zero. That's the file descriptor. RSI, uh, oh, RAX into RSI. So RAX is at. So this is actually how you can just read this just from the assembly. So you see if mm -hmm. you move your mouse cursor up to that load effective address, uh, four lines above, mm -hmm. it's moving negative B0 RBP into RAX and then two lines later moving RAX into RSI. So oh. this, this means that our buffer is located at, uh, at B0 minus RBP. And we know RBP always points to save RBP. So if you it should be your difference should be B zero plus eight, and that will take you to your um, to the saved instruction pointer. This is how you can do this just from looking at the assembly. All right, and B zero plus eight is just B eight. So that like that yep. is correct, like what I have, right? Okay, yep. cool. Um, so okay, so that's good. So my buffer is correct. Um, so actually, um, yeah. So I didn't realize this does actually change um, between runs. So do I just like. Do I like in the middle, I don't know if I can like run this while looking at the code and then like change my code and feed it in input. You cannot. So when you, uh, so you, if you like try to GDB or uh, debug the program, it drops the privileges that it needs to read the flags. Um, right. So that's, that's why you can't do that. Let, let's do this. Um, can you open up GDB? So you mm -hmm. have your, your input, right? So you've ran right. that program. It's it created output in slash temp. Right? Um, yes, that is correct. Let me just uh, make sure I did that. Yeah, I did. Okay. Um, so and, uh, then uh, this is great. Yeah. So uh, yeah, GDB that. And mm -hmm. then what you can do. Oh, yeah, go ahead. And then uh, set your breakpoint like you would do. I usually like to set it right at the um, read function. Uh, yeah. Um, hang on one second. <sighs> how, how do you do that? Because doesn't that hex address change? Um, Stephen, look in chat. Oh, there you go. Breakpoint on read at PLT. That's great, actually. Uh, Is that going to do it on all oh, of them? Wait, or are wait. there lots of reads throughout the entire program? There's one read. There's only one. Oh, all okay. other ones are right. puts. They're, they're outputs. Um, so you can see it goes um, call Q read at PLT uh, and that's okay, what we're exploiting. But, but the problem right here is right. We're not actually reading from that input that you wanted. So try um, R space uh, less than here. I'm going to write it in chat. Uh, 
R space less than and then slash temp slash a, exactly. like whatever file I said. Yeah. So that this okay. is how you can debug things while using an input file that you control, right? So this is mm -hmm. this is uh, the way I like to debug these these exploits, uh, or whatever that was. So. And an R is, I think, restart. So it restarts it from the beginning with the breakpoint. Oh, so like, have. so like right now I should yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Just, let's just reset it so we can get back here with the input that we want. Program being debugged. So just like start from the beginning? Yep. Okay. Um, cannot insert breakpoint two. Um, okay, so I'm going to have to redo my breakpoints then, correct? Yes. Okay. There's a good way for this. I just can't them, remember. There's a way to actually view your breakpoints. I think it keeps the breakpoints though. Yeah, no, it does. Um, hang on, let me think real quick. Uh, hang on. Uh, is that the right okay. file name? Sorry, attack for two. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, no, what happened is um, I actually had this problem a while ago. Uh, what I need to do is, so I'm going to run it uh, with, I'm going to run it right now, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what I'm going to do nice. is do this, uh, continue, and then I'm going to set my breakpoint oh, at nice. zero. Let's okay. drive F2, six, four, three, one. So right at that read, the call queue read PLT. Yeah. Oops. Oops. Um, it, no. Uh, no. Yeah. I forgot the star. star. Yeah, I know. It's annoying. It's crazy to me cool. that GDB has its own syntax that's different from other things. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now when I hit continue, we will now run in some bytes. So okay. now what cool. I do is so now we're right up there. File. So yeah, if you do NI, right, that will step one instruction over the read. And I just like that. Yeah. And then uh, now, so we've read in all the bytes. It sh you should have overwritten the saved instruction pointer. Uh, to verify you can do it in many ways, uh, I would probably do, I usually do X slash uh, 20G uh, and then uh, space dollar sign uh, RBP, the base pointer. All right, you said that? Yeah. Oh, okay. uh, 20GX, can you add uh, X at the end? To, X at the end tells it we want hex. So G tells it we want 64 bit giant numbers. Okay. So it didn't overwrite so then, that. That's weird. Oh, it do, didn't overwrite it? Yeah, look, it's not changed. So if you do that and do RSI, uh, can you do RSI? Dollar sign or just RSI? Uh, sorry, the, the exact same instruction as before. So if you just do up and then uh, change RBP to RSI. So RSI is your buffer. So mm -hmm. this will tell us what it read in. Uh, are you sure that instruction is uh, uh, the file exists? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can, uh, do you want me to like quit and see the file? Yeah. Okay, but uh, anyway. Uh, change directory to temp, ls, uh, attack to two, I can cat it. Uh, no, no, don't, don't cat it because it's weird bytes. Uh, do hex dump. A hex dump space is dash capital C. And then the file name, yeah. So why didn't it read in that? Is her address even on there? Oh, shouldn't there be like a one three one zero or something? The the ten thirteen is the bytes that she, uh, that we have for that. So yeah, it totally makes sense, right? These are you can there's forty one and we can see it's up to B zero, and we have eight of those at B zero, so we know it's B eight A's, and then ten thirteen. Why didn't we see those A's? Uh, let's just run. Can we run this program again and, and pass that input just like we did? So like without GDB. Okay. So there's, there's GDB. always, I, yeah, I like to uh, try to reduce as much. So like dot slash, yeah, assignment five overview and then pipe in. Okay, that's great. It's seg faulted. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, if you do ls-la, does it show you a core dump? No, it doesn't uh, actually create the core dump. OK. OK, let's try this. Uh, G, uh, just GDB, the assignment 5 underscore stack overflow 2, please. Yep. And then uh, do run r space uh, without any breakpoints. So we don't want any breakpoints. So just run it and then redirect, yeah, the slash temp slash. Perfect. Uh, problem segmentation follow. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so it's uh, 0564C5A8A1310. Okay, so this is perfect. This means that this, is, this worked. I don't know why it didn't work before. There must have been something weird that we did. But we can see that uh, here, so you've changed the instruction pointer, but it's saying nothing's there. So can you do... Uh, x slash like five i space win so we can figure out where the address of the win function is here okay yep sure mm -hmm. uh well, i think i found part of your problem i think you can see it right or no no, no wait wait yeah ah uh, okay so that's correct yes okay C F A E. 1310. Okay. And what was uh, Voln? If you. Uh, Voln? Yeah. If you like, what are the addresses of all these functions, basically? Like, so if you do x slash 5i uh, space Voln. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, key. Uh, difference here is that, yeah. like we said, all the, the positions are uh, being randomized every run, mm -hmm. right? So, and the way the randomization works, if you ran this multiple times, like if you, uh, I wonder if it will change. Can you do, uh, just go up until you get back to that R instruction, the run instruction and just run it? Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably gonna be yep. like, yes. Yeah, let's start. Cool, crashed okay. again. And is this a different address? It is awesome. And then print out the, the locations of Win and Foam. Oh, so... so what's changing between these runs? So compare. Because this isn't changed. Oh, it is. Yeah, so which of the instructions are changing? Or which of which bytes are changing, let's say? Uh, five, six, two, zero. Five, six changing basically like all of these except for what or what's um, not changing is the important part you might need to scroll uh -oh. up a little bit oh that's see the other oh, win right. function yeah there you go yes yeah, sorry um so when we have zero x five six four so five six two um cfa so Zero five six, so two five six. Um, and then we have eight AE and we have F one zero. So this and then the three one zero isn't changing, so it's just these spikes. Exactly. So Perfect. would this be on an address like zero X five six three one ten? Because five six and three one ten don't change or it it was in the past, but it won't be in the future, right? Right. What what you're looking at is right the uh, uh, it it shows you that these bytes are there. Like um, sorry, yeah. So this is the last run, but we can't predict the next run. But we do know that at least the last byte remains the same. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And so. Uh, what if we just overwrote that last byte? Would that work? Oh, like just the 3110? Uh, well, we can't overwrite just the 310 because th that 03 is a whole byte. And that right. earlier part of it changes every time. So we don't necessarily uh, know that off the top of my head or off the top of our heads. Um, you can just guess it, though. 
Yes. So that's the other thing. So the uh, if you put any random hex digit followed by a three, it will work one sixteenth of the time. Which is what we have in here, right? So oh, we we really? have, so I, I believe going off of that, if you run this sixteen times, it should uh, give you your flag. Do you want to try it right now? Well, obviously they're not independent, changes. so you actually have a yeah. So if I run, okay, so I run my program 16 times, it'll work? Good, yeah. It might take okay. more than that because of statistics. It might take less. Right. So, okay, so I'm going to quit my DVD. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm going to quit. And I'm just going to, like, run my program 16 times. Yep. Up enter is your friend. Uh, attack. Okay, so then CD check. Uh, I'm just gonna clear it. And then so dot slash assignment device overflow. Feed in slash temp slash decker four two. And then so I just do this like uh I just keep running my program like Python dot attack dot py. No, 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 no. You don't need just to just up it. enter. Yeah, exactly. Just hit up and. Oh, really? Enter. Yep. Okay, so I'll just like and keep doing it until you get the answer. <laughs> oh, there it is. So see, it just awesome. randomly, right? Those bytes all aligned, and so you were good, and it uh, worked. So, and this is nobody else's flag, so it's fine that we see this. But anyways, uh, if you want to wait when you submit that, otherwise you're. Wait, I should wait. Uh, no, it's fine. I was just saying because since okay. you're showing your screen, but yeah, great job. Look at that team. All right, awesome. Yep. Thank you. So, so the TA shows a way to do that automated so that you don't have to hit up enter 16 or who knows however many times. But yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, You could theoretically be hitting up enter like all day and not actually get it just based off the magic of statistics. But that requires being very unlucky. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, thanks everyone for doing this, uh, for sticking around. I think that's right. Yeah. We started. Oh, no, no. We still have five minutes. Oh, wow. Sorry. 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 Let's keep going. Anybody have anything else? Um, I did have a question about just like what we were seeing there with a the GDB dump, like mm -hmm. those outputs that we were seeing on our screen. Um, so on, on the uh, left hand side, you had all the blue numbers and then two columns of white numbers. Mm -hmm. um, that column of blue numbers, is that like the actual stack? Is that the addresses on the stack? It is the addresses itself. So the way to interpret that is the left-hand side is all the addresses. And on the right-hand side is what are the memory, lo what's in, the, in memory at that memory address. With that, okay. Yeah, so it's it's like if you think about the you know computer, it's like a, has a bunch of uh, I don't know, it just has a bunch of memory, right? You're saying, okay, what's at memory ten, and then you know you're saying, and then what you're saying is, and that's when you set up those commands. You're saying, okay, show me what's at memory address ten, and then right there, interpret that as if it was a sixty-four bit integer or uh, or eight byte, you know, same thing, sixty-four bits, eight bytes and then show it to me as hex. And then interpret eight after that, because you just showed me eight bytes, interpret eight bytes after that as a thing, show me that, and then keep doing that. So it's showing you the addresses of all of those. And that's why the addresses are all spaced out by eight. And we can also tell it to show it as an instruction too, or is that yep, exactly. work slightly so if you, differently? Okay. If you do it with X uh, slash five I, so the I means interpret it as an instruction, X means interpret it as a hex, uh, there's probably others as well to interpret it at, you can, and then the size changes. So G is about changing the size to 64 bit. If you do, uh, oh, I just did this the other day. I can't remember exactly what character is, but, uh, 
uh, if you look it up, you can set it to be uh, 32 bits or even just a single byte. You, you have total control over how those look to you, which can be really, very helpful in debugging. Uh, slash S, if you use S, it's interpreted as a string. So it will actually interpret it as a string and show you like the strings. Um, it, it looks like you can do BH and BHW right, and G. Byte. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, W is for wide, so that's 32 bits. And G is giant for 64 bits. It's very helpful for understanding what memory actually looks like. Any other questions? Uh, just a quick question about the assembly challenges. Mm -hmm. um, so with um, assembly one um, and with uh, x86-64 in general, the three arguments are RDI, RSI, and RDX. Is that correct? Uh, I have no idea. I have to look it up every time. Oh, okay. It's one of those things like I knew. So the way to look it up, it's the uh, uh, system system v or system it's a calling convention is what you're looking up okay calling so, convention yeah and system v or i think it's system five is where that comes from but obviously so in here so for x86 64 yes so parameters are rdi yes so you're exactly right rdi rsi rdx okay um and if we move if if there's a if the first instruction in the program is move and then the first parameter is r9 and the second parameter is rcx those registers aren't initialized so does it do anything uh it always does something right it does well, whatever uh yes whatever it, it does says, something right? so, but uh, if the if the registers like they don't have values to them bec because the values are stored in the other uh, rdi rsi and rdx uh, let's see. Well, the whole parameters are, uh, it looks like in registers, RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, R9, and then other values would be passed on to the stack. Okay. So if, if there's only three parameters passed into the function, then only registers RDI, RSI, and RDX would be stored? Correct. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're the only ones that should be used, but it's uh, it technically you can write assembly to do anything, right? The, the only thing these calling conventions do, it means that when you write a C program and it's compiled to a binary and I write a C program that uses those functions, I know how to match them up and they'll actually work together. Right. Okay. So yeah, in general, you know, if something, so like the, the, if you look at the recorded office hour video I made from last week, you can see that um, things like RBP and RSP, right? The base pointer and the stack pointer, we don't know yeah. what those values are when our function is called, but we still operate on them, right? We copy, uh, we like push the base pointer onto the stack. We set the current base pointer to the stack pointer. And those are all values that we don't necessarily know. It's not that nothing happens, right? Uh, it's that we just don't know statically what those exact values are, but you can still reason about the program assuming something about those values. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I'll check out that, that office hour video. That'll probably help. Yeah. I think that that helps a lot with understanding. It was in the context of the Caesar. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, thing. The, yeah. The Caesar challenge. Yeah. I'm going to post the link in chat. Yeah, I walked through the first, I think, 20 instructions of that or something. So it, it's, uh, I think, useful to see what's going on. But cool. Okay, this was great. Uh, thanks, everyone, for sticking around. And uh, yeah, see y'all on Thursday for our last class. Isn't that crazy?